Amy Lukowitz is a member and past president of the Wakefield, Massachusetts Rotary Club. Born and raised in Lynn, she has a bachelor's degree from Boston College in communications and a master's degree in human services and leadership development from Northeastern. Currently, Amy is the Zone 32 Public Image Assistant Coordinator. She has experience as an assistant governor, foundation membership, and scholarship chair, and has co-chaired the district's Polar Plunge for Polio. Professionally, she manages a federal youth substance abuse prevention grant for the North Reading Police Department. And uh, like everybody else here tonight, I am uh, very excited to hear what Amy has to say. So it's all yours. Thank you, Art. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Charlene, for inviting me. It's, it's nice to cross borders sometimes, even if it's digital. Um, coming from District 7930, which is just north of Boston, and I already see some familiar faces. I see the Albrights, and I think I saw uh, Russell Bertrand on there. So some friends that I see here and there at different zone meetings. So thank you for having me. And um, I was just with my parents, and on behalf of them, they would like to um, thank you for letting me use my actual degree and what they invest in Boston College for, because I do work for the police now, and I don't often get to use my actual degree. So they would like to say thank you for that. Um, and we are going to talk tonight a little bit about uh, public image. Um, before we get started, I just want to let everybody know that this is meant to be as interactive as we possibly can on Zoom. So if you have any questions during the presentation, um, I don't have a really good way of seeing all of your hands wave at me. So if you wouldn't mind just taking yourself off of uh, mute and just ask your question verbally, that'd be great because I am going to share the screen and I won't be able to track all of you. I think there's almost 30 people on the call or on the presentation today, which is a great turn. So congratulations, Charlene. That's, that's wonderful. news. So let me get this going here for you. Oh no, Charlene, I am disabled from, from share screen. Okay. Can you make me a co-host, please? Just don't remove yourself totally as that. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. How about that? Okay. So thank you again so much. Um, tonight we're going to hopefully try to make, make your club's public image as irresistible as possible, or at least start having you think about things a little bit differently. And I think it's so great that your district is focusing on vibrant clubs. It is the core of growing our clubs and making them successful. So I really applaud you for taking this on and including public image is a key part of that. Uh, typically, I like to introduce myself to Rotary meetings through um, what my uh, Rotary moment was. And this is a picture of me in the Philippines. Our district has a partnership with Rotoplast. And several years ago, I think it was 2015 now, so five years ago, we relaunched that program. And I was able to go to uh, Cebu, Philippines. My mom was able to go as well, who, by the way, had the best job in the whole thing and the whole program. Her job was to hold the babies after surgery until their moms could come get them. Um, she had the best job. I oversaw all of medical records because I happened to have um, some knowledge of Excel worksheets. But I want to tie this in about with public image and explain this picture a little bit more. One night we got off early, and by early I mean after a 14 hour day, and my mom and I decided to go to a beauty salon that was next to our hotel and get our nails done. Uh, we had been there for I think 10 days at that point. And we just thought, we'll go get our nails done. It'll be something fun and help a little business here. Well, my mom wore her rotary and rotoplast shirt into the beauty salon and everybody spoke perfect English. And while we were there, we were just gabbing with the other women and the beauticians that were there. And one of them said, what, what religion are you guys from? Because it said, um, our rotoplast said mission, a rotoplast mission. And my mom said, oh no, we're, we're with rotary. Um, this is a medical mission. And being the person that was in charge of scheduling and all of medical records, I knew that the next day we had two openings for surgeries. And the reason we had those openings is because we had two little kids get fevers and they were unable to go to their surgeries. And so just in passing, I said, you don't happen to know anybody who has a cleft lip or a cleft palate, do you? And of the five women that were in that beauty salon with us, three of them knew somebody. That's unheard of in the United States. It was really a shock to us. But one of the beneficiaries of my mom wearing her t-shirt and somebody asking us what we were doing there is that little girl there next to me. Her name is Alyssa. And because my mom wore her rotary shirt, it started a conversation that led that little girl to getting her cleft palate surgery. And uh, we still keep in touch and she does very well. And I, I just adore her. And it was such a great um, moment for 
you know, who knew? Who knew when that little girl would ever get her, her surgery, if at all? So uh, that's how it ties into public image, but that was really one of my rotary moments. Uh, as Art mentioned, so I oversee a federal drug grant for the North Reading Police Department. And we joke around a lot. And I, I will tell you one of the benefits of working in a police department, my sarcasm game has gone very high. And we joke around that I should get a badge. And so one of the guys gave me my junior officer sticker badge, the, the badges that they give the toddlers, they gave to me, but the jokes on them because I framed it and put it on my desk. Um, I really enjoy my work. It is 100% challenging, especially during times of COVID. 90% of my job is helping kids uh, not ever start drugs. And I dabble a little bit in enforcement, but um, it's really a, a joy of my life to be able to help the community that way. But for fun, I love to scuba dive. And um, specifically, I love to scuba dive with sharks and I love to scuba dive in unusual places. That's a picture of myself and my dive partner, Mike, in um, Easter Island. And know that Moai is not real. I found out disappointingly, it was actually um, a movie prop. So I was really let down with that. But I love scuba diving and, um, and I love when I can travel for rotary and then stay a little bit longer and dive. So let me introduce you a little bit to my club of Wakefield, Massachusetts, not Russell's Wakefield, Rhode Island. Uh, we're 12 miles north of Boston. And before COVID, we met in a very nice, beautiful living facility with amazing food. Now I am happy to tell you that we're meeting hybrid. We meet online every week and once a month we meet in person and online at the same time to do a service project together socially distanced apart. We just completed our second one since COVID and it's looking like it's going to continue and I, I absolutely adore that. We are approaching our 100 year anniversary of 1922 we were founded and our first female president was in 1996. She's still a member of our Rotary Club. It's the woman on the far right end um, and she oversees our service project. Her name is Judy and she's wonderful. We have about 45 members and we invest heavily in polio and youth development. We've also qualified for many district and rotary citations. And as you can see, we love the Patriots. But let's talk about you for a minute. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to see everybody, but if you could wave at me, if you think your club could improve its story in the community, just wave at me. Okay, great, I see a lot of people. How about if you think your club could do more to tell people about what you do? I see some waving, okay. What about if you think your club could do more to tell people about who you are? Maybe some hands, okay. And lastly, if you think the public image and membership are connected. I see, oh, that was much more enthusiastic. Okay, thank you. So for sure, public image and membership are married. And in our district, we, um, for several years, had the public image and membership team meeting together. It is a partnership, it is a marriage. One affects the other. And we are starting to see that more and more during times of COVID where people have less and less uh, um, physical touch points with Rotarians each day. What we put out on social media and our communications really matters and it does connect to back to membership. Not just getting new members, I wanna remind everybody, but also membership retention. So today we are not going to do a public image 101. Instead, it's aimed at bringing your club's public image to the next level and more importantly to consistency. And to be clear, I'm not going to talk about public relations. Public image is a much more robust topic that we could talk for hours about. And tonight it's about you, your club, your projects, your activities, anything and everything that you put Rotary's name or logo on. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. And it's about how you're viewed in the community and how you communicate. What types of messages do you send? But most importantly, it's important for you to know you have 100% control over your public image. So with that said, tonight, I'm gonna to ask you to make some commitments, not in writing, not in a contract, but rather to yourself and to your Rotary Club. So let's get right into it. We're gonna start with master branding. It's part of our mo modern public image. And a few years ago, Rotary International invested both time, money, and research into the develop of master branding. And when I think about it, it's a way to connect all Rotary Clubs together while allowing us to retain our club in, in uh, excuse me, identities. So let me highlight some really great resources that came out of this development. We're going to talk about logos, master branding, excuse me, master guide, 
and also some online tools. And the one that you're probably most familiar about is obviously freshening up logos. It was very important for us to have something a little bit more modern. And as you can see, we're not seeing anything major differently with the design. Instead, it's gone to a mono color. Um, this wheel, by the way, is called, uh, well, before it was called um, the mark of excellence. And I haven't heard that term being used so much in master branding, but if you ever hear anybody ask for the um, mark of excellence, they're talking about the rotary wheel. Another thing with freshening up logos that I really encourage you to use is it brought everything together with uniformity. Now we are seeing the connection between Interact and Rotaract, Rotary, the Rotary Foundation. All of these programs that have had their own logos for a long, long time, we're now starting to see uniformity and um, joining together. These murders took place not only party negligence. I don't have the ability to mute everybody, but I don't know if everybody's here. Um, uh, uh, actors to do this. Um, and I, there are, you know, people also think of the cultural well, revolution. I'm going to try to mute people. Oh, I think I got it. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. Um, oh, let's talk about this. Okay. So the brand book, this is my favorite tool that came out of master branding. A number one, you can print it or you can send it digitally. So they came out with both versions as a PDF or you can print it right out. I have a copy of it at my desk and it is my most used tool that I go to. It is my new best friend. So all you have to do to download it is to Google tell Rotary story. It's really easy. Uh, recently, it did go through another update. And um, I know that uh, that version, that newer version is online. So please, if nothing else, write down Google tell Rotary story. It is a great guide. It is multiple pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight some key pages for you to look at. First, it established a new color palette. Can we all give a virtual round of applause for color? It is no longer just blue and yellow or blue and marigold. Um, we have a, a much bigger color palette to select from, and I am thrilled to see that. And you'll see it for any of you who are graphic designers or printers, you'll see that they give you multiple ways um, Panatone, the RGB versions are there. You don't have to guess. You don't have to do a color match. It actually does it all for you. So I really wanted to highlight that page. The other page is our font page. And uh, fonts you'll find on page 24 and 36. And typically, um, I use the Arial Narrow. And I'm going to give you a tip. The Arial Narrow in Georgia are, are free, as well as Arial uh, Regular. The Frutiger, which is the uh, preferred font is actually quite expensive. So my tip for you is to not use it. Use the Arial. Um, it is still allowed and it's on most of Microsoft applications. So I highly recommend that instead of paying for Frutiger. And the last tool is Brand Center. Brand Center is an online tool that takes the guesswork right out of making flyers, brochures, online marketing, and even PowerPoint presentations. Please bookmark it. You go to rotary.org, log into My Rotary, News and Media, and then you'll find the Brand Center right there. It's here that you can make your own logo, save it in different formats like JPEG or even a PDF, and you can send it right to your preferred printer. You can even send it to your favorite embroidery company. It produces high quality and allows you the flexibility of showing your club specific activities when you're designing print products. I absolutely love the brand center and I use it regularly. So let's get back to you again. Let's do a little exercise. Wave at me if you promise to flip through the master branding guide or visit brand center. Okay, I'm going to hold you to those promises. How about if you'll provide a copy or a link of master branding to your public image chair? Okay, very good. And wave at me if you'll commit to updating your club's logo to match master branding. This is the one thing you can do that is so simple to bring your, your club right into the next generation. Um, I will speak for the zone public image team. It, it kind of drives us nuts when we start seeing those old logos floating around still on new product. Um, Rotary International invested a lot of money in master branding and we really should be using it. it was, it's research based and it's more, it speaks much more to a younger audience. So please consider updating your club's logo. So let's talk about people of action campaigns. People of action campaigns are also available on online for you. 
uh, through the Brand Center. You can use your own picture, so your actual club photos of your members, and you can impose different uh, slogans or messages on there. So again, you visit Brand Center, click on Materials, Toolkits, and then People of Action. It also has toolkits that you can download video, radio ads, outdoor ads, print ads, and even social media. What I love about this tool, People of Action, is it shows people who are in your community. And if at all possible, try not to use the stock photos, try to use your club photos. And if that means that you set them up so that they're posed, please go ahead and do that and create yourself your own photo library to use and impose different, um, different slogans across it. Again, anytime you can use real people from your community, it's better. Again, it's customizable, so take advantage of that. Here's an example of what my Rotary Club did. Um, we have our Polar Plunge and Polio every February, and this was our social media uh, Facebook banner. You can see this is actually our club. We set it up so during our polio launch day, we all wore red and we were able to um, impose the together we end polio slogan right across it. Again, showing people in our community who know these people that this is uh, not just some national brand. This is something that is very local and I highly recommend you do that. Although I will show you the, the stock photos that are available for you um, are, are pretty good and they did a very good job of showing diversity in my opinion. Um, you'll see different uh, ethnicities, different, um, different uh, genders, and I'm really glad that they did that, even, even uh, age differences. And they're growing that stock photo collection by day, but um, I did want to give you an example of a stock photo that you could manipulate, um, whatever preferred uh, uh, slogan is across. And that slogan, by the way, they have a whole library of those as well. Now, wave at me if you get to logging into the Brand Center and looking through the People of Action Toolkit. Okay. How about if you commit to downloading at least one People of Action image? Right, okay. And wave at me if you commit to making one custom People of Action ad. And by custom, I mean it shows your members from your community. Okay, a couple more there. Thank you. So now we're going to focus on social media. And this is the number one topic that I get asked about is how to keep your social media fresh. So I'm not going to go through a one on one about all the differences of Facebook versus Instagram. Um, that's a whole separate presentation, but I am going to show you a couple tools and tricks on social media and what you can do if you get stuck. Um, so, okay. so each of the features of every piece of social media, I do recommend that you become familiar with them. Each one of them has their own benefits and some of them are linkable. So for instance, if you post something on Facebook, you can set it so it automatically posts on Instagram. Um, some have additional tools like live feeds that integrate with your club's website, photo storage, event promotions, and even paid ads. So I, whatever you decide to pick, and I have my own opinions about that, we can talk about it after. I do recommend that you look into the features and benefits of each one. Um, what, what isn't pictured here is things like LinkedIn. TikTok is used by a lot of younger generations. And... Um, a thousand other ones. Snapchat is another one, but these are the three main ones. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I wanted to give you um, some examples of what you can use social media for. You can certainly um, thank your donors and sponsors. You can even thank your volunteers. This is an example of thanks. Well they surprised our polar plungers with fresh fish. You can share it to motivate, so sh make sure that you post pictures. By the way, the number one thing that you can post on any social media is a photo. Even better is a photo with a caption and tagging the picture with the people in the photo. That's the number one thing you can do to grow your social media. You can uh, share events, of course, and do some motivations. And even share articles. I really recommend that when you're stuck with something to post, go online and search some ideas about 
what's going on in other Rotary clubs across the world or even at Rot um, Rotary International. If your district maintains a lot of articles on its website, you can also use that for source. And when in doubt, you can always do a membership shout out. So on days that I don't really have much to post, I do a membership shout out that says, contact us directly. Again, here you see a stock image from the People of Action campaign. Download those and I have a whole library ready to go to be a, basically a filler for me when my club doesn't have anything to post. I do want to take a second to highlight Instagram, which is a growing media platform. Um, if you decide to post to Instagram, one of the key things you can do is to make sure that you are posting action photos. Um, action photos are very easy to post on Instagram. It takes a very short amount of time and it's the number one thing you can do to attract new members. I really encourage you to be thoughtful about what photos that you post. Um, in general, yes, this applies to club donations. <clears throat> Excuse me. If at any po way possible, you can post an image of your donation in action, that is far better than the grip and handshake. And by the grip and handshake, I mean the passing of the check and then you're using your other hand to shake somebody's hand. It's a very nice photo and a lot of people use those giant checks and it's a great idea. But anytime you can show somebody in action, it's going to get so much more visibility and so much more motivation. So I hope that makes sense. And I, I do hope that you think really carefully about um, what photos you post. Post pictures, of course, are, all, are absolutely fine, but you need to make sure that you're describing what's going on in that image. So I wanted to show you a couple of samples of Instagram posts that I have posted um, over the, or in my district. Um, this is when we were, we were talking literally in the room that I'm in right now, we were planning for our polar plunge and um, Cheryl Meehan and Tom Hanker just started laughing. And to me, that's what Rotary is all about. One of the things that I love about Rotary and why I stay in Rotary um, is somebody uh, on the younger side is because of the camaraderie. And I just loved that they were laughing together and I snapped that picture and posted it on our district website. This is from Ryla. It's a very fun posed image, but again, it shows a lot of, uh, a lot of camaraderie smiling in our youth in that one. And you can even get really crazy and post goofy pictures. It's okay to show that Rotary is fun. It is okay to let the cat out of the bag on that one. And I, in fact, encourage everybody to do that. La shot, la bag, la shot. <laughs> okay, so um, this is one of the tools that I can send Charlene to send out to everybody. Uh, it is a social media monthly calendar. Now this looks really complicated. So this is kind of advanced, but if you are a Rotary Club that is just starting in your social media journey, what I would recommend doing is selecting uh, one day a week to post. And this is an example of what you could do to post every day during a month, excuse me. Okay, excuse me. What you'll see here is a list of when I'm going, I plan out when I'm gonna do my event promotions. I plan out when I'm gonna share a district link. And I can send this to Charlene because it's a lot to read on Zoom. But <clears throat> I love it when I see clubs give shout outs and promotions to other Rotary clubs. We are all in this together. We don't need to operate in silos. If your club cannot think of one thing to post that day, Go to your neighbor club's page and share something from them. It's a great gift that we can give each other as Rotary Club members, and I don't see it happening enough. But when I do see it, I think it just warms my heart. We don't have to just keep it as what your Rotary Club is doing. Tell about what the district is doing. Tell, tell what your neighbor is doing. Even your neighbor organizations. If you have a local Boys and Girls Club or a YMCA that's hosting an event, it's okay to share that on your social media page and likely they're gonna give you a reciprocal post. So we'll talk a little bit about um, a couple of trends. And the first is hashtags. Um, hashtags help people search for different themes. That's the best way to describe it. And I encourage you to create your own club hashtag. It doesn't have to be as obvious as Wakefield Rotary Club. It can be something fun, something creative. It can be some sort of joke that takes off in your club. It doesn't have to be uh, very specific. But whatever you do, I do recommend that you make them consistent so that you're posting them multiple times. 
The second one is memes. <laughs> so I must lose an hour of sleep every night looking at memes. I think they're extremely funny. Memes are a great strategy for drawing quick attention to something and to have fun. But I have to caution you about overusing it. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of resources here. Meme Generator, Meme Dad, and MakeAMeme.org are all free meme generators that you can create. You'll also hear them called MEMS. Excuse me, but it is okay to create something funny and entertaining and post it on your, on your social media. So I wanna talk about two of the big, biggest mistakes that I see on social media. And the first one is inconsistency. Um, this might be inconsistency of voice, of grammar, of spelling, but most often it is inconsistency of how often somebody posts. So some clubs will post some really wonderful thing about their event and then you don't hear any follow-up from them. You don't get any updates. You don't hear anything from them until either the event happens or the event is over. So if you are deciding to commit to a social media campaign, please be consistent. Use the calendar that I showed you and plan out your posts. It's actually a really great gift to your social media coordinator or your public image chair. The second biggest mistake I see is using internal voice. Please use external voice. And the difference between that is I see people who are typing and they'll say, I had a great day at Wakefield Rotary Club today. And they're posting from the Wakefield Rotary Club page. What that should say is we had a great time. We use external voice. Whoever is posting on your social media should not be using the first person in any way. It should always be um, spoken to from the we. And that's a common mistake. So now I'm gonna have you wave at me if you commit to updating your club's social media at least once. Couple, okay, couple. How about if you commit to meeting with your social media person or your team to develop a calendar? And again, I'll, I'll send you my calendar so you can get a sample. How about if you commit to creating a unique hashtag for your club and you use it? Okay. If you commit to using external voice on social media. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's great to see. So we're going to wrap up with uh, my top five things that you can do right now to improve your club's public image. And the first one is create a public image budget. This is especially challenging during COVID and I'm well aware of that, but a great gift to our Rotary Clubs is to create a budget. It's fiscally responsible. It indicates to the club that public image is important and it can help clubs stay on track. So for example, if you have things planned out <coughs> like a boosted post that costs money and that hasn't happened, you can say, well, we need to really boost this and we can use it on promoting membership. The club, it can be extremely simple. It can be extremely um, specific if you want. I'm not asking you to do uh, anything specific. I would just ask that if you don't have a public image budget, please consider creating one. The second thing is to create a list of your active volunteers. And this will take a little more explanation. Um, what I use my list for in terms of social media is every time I write a press release or submit a photo caption, I check off which Rotarians were in the picture or mentioned in the public, um, excuse me, the press release. And my goal is to make sure 100% of my members get acknowledged either in a press release or in a photo. It is a great membership retention especially when we see the same, uh, the, typically the Rotary president is in every single image, but the people working behind the scenes really have an investment in that. It's basically a roster and you just go through as a check mark. I really recommend you do that and um, ensure that every Rotarian in your club is getting recognition somehow. It doesn't have to be in print, it could also be on social media. Number three, buy something for your members. Now, I don't care if it's lapel pins, shirts, hats, it doesn't matter to me, but consider using your budget to update your club's um, image and freshen it up a little bit. 
one really easy thing to do is to buy everybody new name tags during COVID so that they can wear them when you all get back together again. Um, I think it's a really great investment back in the membership. And things like lapel pins are very short money. I, you know, if you can afford to do it, or if it's in your budget, for those of you who have a budget, um, spend the money and just buy updated lapel pins. And if you're going to do that, my little tip for, for uh, name tags and lapel pins is splurge and get the magnetic version. It's worth the extra sometimes 30 cents to get your members the nicer magnetic versions and it doesn't put holes in their clothes. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy upgrade. The second thing I would recommend spending money on now is updating, believe it or not, your road signs. There are some amazing, fresh looking modern road signs. And I heard somebody say once that if your road signs are dull and faded, it's likely that your Rotary Club is also dull and faded. So now is a great time to get those road signs updated. It's a very uh, distance project to have them put up in your town. And the ones that are available online are extremely bright and uh, eye catching. And they're all to master branding guides. So print media is still a thing. And I get asked all the time, Amy, is it even worth like submitting a newspaper article? And I believe in total communication. And what I believe in, when I say total communication, what I mean is I believe in print media, digital platforms, um, your traditional newspaper, your online newspaper, all of the forms. If you can share a story broader and across multiple platforms, the better chances you are people are going to read it. So I wanted to encourage you creating a list a year in advance of things that you'll submit a press release about. By creating a list, it saves time, it rec you can recognize achievements, and it builds awareness, but it also helps you stay on track if you have a list. So let's look at a couple of things you could do with that. Every time you have a new member, you can write a press release. This could be a template that you just plug and play. Recognize perfect achievement of attendance. Now that's a little harder during COVID, but when you get back in action, that's a great one. Obviously, if it's scholarship app opportunities. Very few um, and in far in between do we recognize member anniversaries. Those members that hit the 25 year, for my club, the 50 year mark. Um, that's an amazing achievement and we should be recognizing member anniversaries. In December, when you have your annual meeting, an election of new officers. And by the way, when you install those officers, they get another press release template. Um, talk about your total volunteer hours. And this is something to track online in your goal, goal center. Rotorship or training participation, um, that's something to acknowledge, especially when somebody graduates from Rotary Leadership Institute. Any awards or citations, whether they be local, Rotary International, um, or bigger audience, that's something to recognize. Uh, you can write about new partnerships within the community. And when in doubt, we have an amazing story with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. A lot of those press releases are plug and play. They're provided by npolio.org. Go online and submit one of those. It's an amazing partnership and it's something that the world benefited from and we should be telling that more. So my last recommendation is this weekend, create a plan on how you will keep your commitments. Anything that you've kind of waved your hand at me tonight, you need some help to do that very likely. Your club and your members deserve a plan. So does that mean you have to think about recruiting a team? Does it mean you have to start learning more about social media? This is going to be a different answer for all of the clubs that are concerned here. Make sure it's tailored to you and your club's needs. Some of you are farther ahead on well website development. Some of our are a little bit further behind. Think about all the things that you need to move yourself forward and your club forward. So I'm also going to the district leaders on this call, and I'm going to ask you to help us out with this. I would ask that you invest one printed master brand per guide per club, have sent to the Rotary president, the club president, public image chair. I would also ask that you create a library of press release templates. This is something I can help you out with um, and have them stored on your district website for plug and play. You can also offer public image matching mini grants to help clubs out. So if you happen to have uh, funds left over, something my club, uh, excuse me, my district did, we did matching mini grants. And those mini grants could use, be used for anything related to public image. They had to have prior approval by the district and they had to match master branding. But that's a great opportunity for the district to support them. So this is gonna be the end of my official presentation and this is how to contact me.
Um, please, I get calls all the time. Don't feel like you're bothering me. You can text me at my phone number as well. That's my cell phone. Um, even if I'm at the police station, I will, I will answer it. So this is my contact information and I will open it up to questions. And let me just see if we can stop the share and I can see you all again. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna answer a couple questions that I see on here. So Mark asked, will we be able to get your PowerPoint presentation? Charlene, if it's okay with you, I'll send that to you in a PDF form and how you get it out. Okay, so we'll definitely do that. How do you feel about posting COVID safe photos or Rotarians in action, i.e. Rotarians in action wearing masks? I personally feel that it's not just about the masks, you have to show that, that you're able to keep distance as well. That's my personal opinion. That varies state to state and it actually varies town to town. Um, for example, I work in a COVID yellow town and we're starting to see people get closer together, but I live in a COVID red town and that's, I would not show people right next to each other. Um, so I feel that it's absolutely okay to do that. Definitely wear masks and whenever possible show you where still standing apart. And if that means you have to set up um, some sort of system to take the picture from a further distance, then do that. But I uh, just if you want to take yourselves off mute, I'm open to any questions you might have. Ken, hi. Let me uh, is hashtag is that Twitter? I, I'm on social media, but I'm not on Twitter. Is that what that is? So hashtags can be used across almost all social media platforms. I um, definitely on Twitter, definitely on Instagram. You can put them on Facebook as well. They're just not as much on Facebook, but you can use them across all. Thank you. Sure. Amy? Hey, Art. Did you call on me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, one thing on those uh, photos and the, and the masks, uh, one thing I have done in a couple of situations is if we're using a photo that was taken earlier, just in a caption, say, you know, photo taken before the pandemic so nobody um, gets confused. And, Great point. <laughs> okay, thank you. And, and it, uh, I'd like to add one uh, very, I think, very important element to all of those that you mentioned, uh, and that is the club website, which uh, is tremendously important. In, in our club, it has been a very significant driver of inquiries that have led to applications and new membership. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, and the, you know, it's not just to have a website for the sake of having it. It needs to be inviting it needs to talk about Rotary in terms of what it might do for you as a visitor uh, to the website. Because in, in reality, when anybody uh, out there in the community hears uh, somebody say something nice about Rotary, what's the first thing they do? They go to Google and they say, Rotary in North Reading, okay? And if a club comes up with, that's very attractive and very inviting, then you get an inquiry and you get a chance to uh, develop a new member. It, it seems like old hat, it's a tremendously effective tool. I agree, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, just as a point of reference too, you know, you have to maintain it um, just like everything else. And if you let that slide, it can look very poorly on your club. Um, just as a point of note though, uh, if you are over generally over the age of 40 and you're looking uh, for the Wakefield Rotary Club, people do look for websites. Under 40 looks at social media. So just something to keep in mind that it's equally important to maintain both of those things. And, and on social media, I think another point uh, that's important is to, in addition to doing good posts, is to encourage all club members to like and share those posts because that's how it gets spread. And it's just as simple as clicking like, clicking share. It's, it's not hard. Excellent point. I've actually asked my members during a meeting to take out their phones and actually do it right then and there before we leave. When I was Rotary Club president, that's how we ended our meetings and we kind of got away from that, but that's a great reminder, Art. Um, another thing that members can do is check in from location to the club. So they don't have to physically be at your physical location to check into your club if you have the settings set right. One more thing and I will shut up. Yep. And that is 
anybody uh, around the district who has any questions on how to do some of the things that Amy's been talking about, if you want to get in touch with Charlene or get in touch with me directly, um, we'll arrange uh, you know a, a nice long phone session uh, to show you how to get it done. Thank you, Art. Um, another way to, to address your social media needs, and I highly encourage this, is to find a high school intern or a paid intern. They're excellent at it. Um, just monitor how they phrase things a little bit. I've learned that the hard way with my job. Um, but uh, it's a great way to engage your Interact Club if you have somebody uh, in Interact or request somebody from the Student Council. It's a great way to interact and get in with the schools. And we actually discussed that at one of our meetings and we're in the uh, process of doing that, re reaching out to the high school and getting one of the students because it'll be great experience for them as well. And they'll get exposed to the club, to Rotary. So. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Amy, thank you for all of your points. Um, I tend to do a lot of the Facebook postings in my club. Um, and I, I feel a sense of urgency that I feel like if you're not posting almost like while something is happening, you're too late. Is, is that true? Because I feel like a dozen other people have already posted it and then a day later I'm going, oh yeah, we were there or we did this or whatever. Um, so what is your thought about that? And how many people do you feel it's like, do you need to make that a robust ongoing, you know, like Facebook page or, or whatever? So uh, I'm gonna answer the first question. Or when you say how many people does it need to make it robust do you mean how many followers do you need no or like administrators so you can capture oh. things in a time sensitive oh. way <laughs> oh that's a that's a whole, whole other conversation but um i having a three-person social media team now that's for a club size of about 45 and each one of those should have be listed as an administrator so that they can post immediately that's the most effective thing uh, the question regarding, do you have to post immediately? Now, there's definitely some sort of sense related to urgency. And I think that when something is a hot topic or a hot event, posting that you're there is different than posting a lengthier post about the impact of that thing. You can do both. So whether it be your members check in and say, representing Rotary at this fundraiser or represent Rotary at this uh, you know, special presentation, that's different than then going in and telling a story about it. Um, so both of those are viable options. I think for some people or some clubs that don't have the ability to have a multiple person social media team, it's just not realistic to expect urgency. It's just not. You have jobs too on top of all this, right? Um, you would almost need to have a full-time person doing that. But that's okay to ask for help. And I think it's okay to ask your members to say, listen, when you're, if you're going to post it personally, could you tag our club in it? That's an easy way to, to diversify that, that post. Okay. Thank you. That that. Yeah. Amy, Amy, do you, um, do you recommend, like, I, I don't do Facebook, but I, I do Instagram. Um, I've got to get better. I did create one for my club, but I haven't posted. So thank you for this. This, this gives me a, uh, uh, you know, a boost and let's get it done. Um, but there are others in the club that do Facebook often or uh, Twitter often. Do you recommend assigning one person to one social media? You can. The, the catch-22 of that is making sure, I prefer that the same story gets posted across all platforms. Okay. It doesn't have to be at the same time. Um, one of my side jobs is I oversee the social media for my friend's brewery. And oftentimes I don't tweet at the same time that I post uh, on their Instagram and Facebook. The reason those go together is because they're linked. Okay. Facebook are linked. So that might be an easy fix to, for you if you're going to post on Instagram to have it automatically go to Facebook. But um, regarding the question of uh, having multiple people post, if you can somehow ensure the same message gets out, and again, it does not have to be at the same time, that is best practice. You can also, air quotes, you can steal their post and just copy and paste it. Right. That's right. an easy way. Yeah. Amy, Amy yes. could, I, could I just share a pet peeve about Instagram? Of course. Um, if we're going to post on Instagram, it would be really nice if people explained the picture. 
I get so many Instagram posts and, you know, I know who they are and I'm wondering what the heck is happening and why, you know, what's the significance of this picture? So it would be really nice if we just, you know, just a few words. Yeah. To maximize, you know, Instagram has some really interesting um, tricks. Uh, if you put certain amount of dots and spaces that actually helps with the way people read it. it, there's a whole lot of tips and twists on that, but keep your, your caption short, because as you know, Charlene, when you look at the image, the caption only shows typically the first right. five or six words, if that, yes. and it's really frustrating. So um, I also recommend if the district has social media that all the clubs make sure they tag the district social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yes. that, that also makes it really easy for whoever manages your district page. Mm -hmm. to make sure that Does the district have one, Charlene? Yes. Yes, okay. we do. Mm -hmm. Hey, Charlene. Tell, well, we're going to get some followers tonight. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. What do you have for the district? What we have, well, we have um, a Facebook page that's very okay. active. And I'm not sure if she's on the call. Is Chris on the call tonight? No, no, she's very active with it. Right. And yep. um, no, and um, and of course we have a website. I'm, I can't commit to Instagram though. Did I just commit to Insta Instagram a minute ago? Okay, good no. because <laughs> I don't think I don't think we have. <laughs> I do have a question for you, Amy. Uh, yes. Way, way, way back in the beginning time, you said that you had an opinion on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Would yes. you share that with us? Okay, so I'm going to speak from analytics first. Um, the way that I try to think about it is what am I trying to do with my social media? And if my goal is to get information to my members or is my goal to attract people externally of Rotary? So I'm going to take it from that framework that we're, we're looking to get our message external. And the way I kind of explain it in terms of, is Russell, still, oh, Russell, you're still here. From, all right, great. I'm going to bring you into this, Russell, and our, our old bet that we have going back a number of years. If I am a new to a town, let's say Wakefield, and I Google Wakefield Rotary Club, I want Rotary, or if I, excuse me, if I Google Wakefield Service, let's even start there. I want the Wakefield Rotary Club to show up first. The way that those analytics work is by drawing information from your social media and your website. I'll explain my connection with Russell in a second. The way the analytics work is that every time you post new content, that's like the best thing. It looks for new content. So remember I mentioned uh, websites need to be consistent in posting and, and social media needs to be consistent in posting. That's why. It's because I want you to have fresh and new content out there for the little bots to grab and to highlight your club. Now, in order of importance, it draws from websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram in that order. So if you're gonna focus on anything and your purpose is external audience, Facebook is better because that's like, kind of like the number one. Best case scenario is all of them. That's obviously best case. That's my opinion about um, which one is better and which one is more user uh, going to drive you more users or, or more views. Alternatively, keep in mind that the generations under a certain age don't use Facebook at all anymore. And in that case, if you're trying to attract young, uh, Instagram is definitely the way to go or LinkedIn is definitely the way to go. Um, just keep in mind that that demographic tends to be 20 and under, 25 and under, and most 25-year-olds are still joining Rotaract. So I know a lot of Rotary Clubs are making an effort to attract younger people and they'll say, oh, I'm going to post to Instagram. Really, Twitter is probably the way you still want to go or Facebook. And even then, keep in mind, the best case scenario is across all three. 